Hey guys, Fred here. The following clips are from Elders Rising, episode 9. And hope you enjoy. Emergency prep. Am I okay moving on to this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's my thoughts this week. Um, the, the, probably the most, I, it's hard to say what the most important thing is, but one of the very important things to do is to think of your plan for yourself. It needs to be, okay, if, uh, if there's an emergency in this area and people are trying to leave this area, how am I going to handle that? Where am I going to go with my family? Do I have another place to go or am I going to hunker down here? Do I have, do I have the stuff I need to hunker down? Do I have the stuff I need to move to the place that I'm going to go? You have to think of exactly what, where you're going. If, if everybody's trying to get there, then the roads are going to be clogged. If they're, if the roads might not even be safe to go on, you don't know. You, you have to think of, okay, if I don't have the roads to go on, do I have a way to get there without the roads? Do I have a way to get there without, if this runs out, if that runs out? Well, and, and thinking about the roads, it's important to have, um, you know, tertiary routes, more than one. How many different ways do you have to get there and mark them out on a map? Because obviously the freeways are going to be crowded and plugged and and everything, because that's what everybody's going to do. Mm -hmm. So no, no those secondary and tertiary routes to get to where you want to go. And then it's another little thing, but you hear it at schools and stuff. You'll hear it have a, a have something figured out with your kids for if they're at school, if they're in a place where you're, they're not with you. And you need to you need to find them. For instance, with my kids, um, if if we run late or something like that, we have a specific spot designated where they where they are to meet us, and they're not to go with anybody else. It's like okay, this is where you meet us. This is where this is where we will meet, and don't go out of this area until we come get you or someone who you who you can confirm comes and gets you that we sent. And it's like you have a you, challenge and password. Exactly. That's what we use in the military. Um, for example, um, Mickey Mouse or something that you use or something like that. So one person says one word as the challenge and then the answer is the other word. So like Mickey Mouse, for, mm -hmm. for example. I mean, you would want to make it something much. Something unique to you something guys. Something unique. But a challenge and password has its use in the military for that reason, to, to determine friend from foe. And we still did it in Iraq, in case you lose comms, you know, worst case scenario, you know, D-Day, Thunder, Flash, Flash, Thunder, whatever, you know. So think about that, have a challenge and a password. If it's dark or if your kids are hiding, you could show up and say... Whatever. And this is important, in, especially in the, in the climate that we're in now, when people are preying on kids, when people are searching for kids. How many kids go missing every year? Only for the opportunity of chaos to take what they can, because that thing will still be alive and well if society collapses. Yeah. And so that's, that was the emergency prep is... is Make sure that you're thinking for yourself and, and planning it out yourself and not just, oh, this is not just winging it. Take the necessary precautions for your specific area. For example, if you get snow, get snowshoes. Mm -hmm. Get get wool. You know, good. What good. kind of what kind of shirt is this, Mitch? This is merino wool. It doesn't itch. Why do you get merino wool? Because it doesn't itch. But isn't that more expensive? It is more expensive. But, but if, they, if I get wet, wool will still keep you warm. And you say that's called merino wool? Merino wool. Merino. Yes. <laughs> but the merino wool, I like merino wool because it doesn't itch. It's softer. Is merino a brand or a type? It's a type of wool. Okay, because if it so was like a brand, this, people this would be like... This specific brand is smart wool. Um, and I like smart wool, but it is more expensive. There's others. There's marrow wool. There's uh, icebreaker. 
Um, there's a few, and they're all they're all good stuff. It, it is more expensive than others, but with wool, if you get wet, it still retains the the heat properties. You'll stay warm. Cotton, if you get wet, you're screwed. You're gonna freaking die. And to be clear, we're not sponsored by anybody. I know that. No, uh, know unless that. You, unless there's somebody out there that wants to sponsor us. Yet with we're not ammo. Sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but no wool wool is probably the most indispensable thing that you can have in your in your preparations one of the most as far as gear goes i mean obviously you need food water shelter those are the most important but i mean wool will keep you warm if you get wet and yeah it's expensive but I mean, what's your life worth? I have lots of wool. Base layers. You can buy surplus wool. Stuff that the Army used. Uh, wool blankets. Wool. All sorts of stuff. They used wool for centuries. For a reason. I even wear wearing wool socks right now. Yeah, it's expensive, but... I've got merino wool for myself. I've got uh, working on building up more of it for my kids and my spouse and everything like that. But that's the thing is think about what you need. Not everybody, if you're not living in a place that has winter, if you're living in a place that has, is that, that your water is, is hard to, to, to get cl- it, <laughs> if you're living in a place where you can't you can't get by without water and water is hard to come by, okay, how far can you go and with water? And if it takes getting yourself into better physical shape so that you can carry enough water to get to your next place, you have to do that. It's like <laughs> That's that's where I'm at is I definitely need to get myself into better shape. Me too. If I have to walk anywhere, I'm screwed. That's because you're gimp. That has several different meanings. I don't know which one you're meaning. (laughs) But your best choice is to stay where, is to bug in, hunker down where you're at. Have, Have the plan to be able to leave and have everything ready to leave in case you have to. Which means having extra gasoline. I would suggest EMP proofing your vehicle in case that's what it is. Um, you can Google EMP shield for your vehicle and it'll show you uh, a thingamajig that you ground to the frame and hook to your battery and the computer or whatever so that if there's an EMP, your vehicle will still run. And your house too. They have them for your house. And yeah, all these things cost money and they're kind of expensive but you know can can you really put a price on not just surviving your your goal shouldn't be to just survive you should have a goal to thrive so that you can help rebuild that sounds ominous helping to rebuild and thriving no, no, no. It, it makes me think the it makes me think I don't know, I was I was there was something I watched how You should go read the book The Road by oh, Cormac I've, McCarthy. I've got that book. The but that's Such the thing is like book. Well, it's like you look at the, the, the attitude that we have towards the future. If you the attitude that we had in the fifties towards the future was like the Jetsons and like, you know, we were flying cars and stuff. And then you get towards the eighties and nineties and it's like, oh Mad Max and it's like <laughs> the road, you know. And it's like nowadays you get a, a vast diversity of, of attitudes towards the future. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future. None of us do. None of us do. Here's the thing that I know is like me getting myself less reliant on the things that I can't control is going to be helping me be future proof. Regardless of good or bad what happens, that helps me to be more future proof. Hope and prepare for the best. Continue to put money in your 401k and your retirement and stuff like that. Um, But also prepare for the worst. 
Well, yeah. If you spend all this money on emergency preparedness stuff and you ultimately don't end up using it, using it well, yeah, that kind of sucks, but because you're out that money, but you also have that peace of mind that if something happens, I'm going to be okay. My family will be okay. Like I said, continue to prepare for, for the optimal outcome. Don't bank on <laughs> on society collapsing because and you're betting Who on knows? society collapsing. <laughs> and it's like you, you're you invested in society collapsing. It's like, oh, I can't wait till it collapses. And it's like, I'm going to do everything I can. I to don't get have it to, to go to work anymore. <laughs> no, that's that's not good either. No, uh, it's prepare for the optimal outcome, but also prepare for, you know, the worst. I'm optimistic. I think that, I think that my family is going to do better because we're learning to learning to depend more on ourselves Mm -hmm. being more self-sufficient and that's like you can't how do you how do you how do you how do you beat the uh, opposing side you show up for the future you live you thrive Mm -hmm. you 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 continue you grow you become unstoppable and it's like when nobody can harm you and take things away from you that's that's why you defend yourself that's why you know that's that's awesome that's that's a good place we live in a great time. There's, th- we got to be careful of the the wickedness and be aware of it. But man, there's so much goodness that goes out. Again, thanks for watching Elders Rising episode nine. Um, hey, buddy! If you like, subscribe and share, and have a great day. Rock the party, everybody. Regardless of what Mitch says, rock the party. <laughs>